chapter 7. John chapter 9. John 9 is probably the most um, well-known story that we're going to place here at the Pool of Siloam. It's the, the man that was born blind. Jesus comes walking along and the disciples ask, was he blind because of his sins or his parents' sins? And Jesus said, neither, so the glory of God could be revealed. And he spits in the mud and puts it on his eyes, which is a super weird thing to do. Um, and then tells him, go wash in the Pool of Siloam. So the man came down here, he washed and he could see and the pharisees you know questioned this who is it that healed you and well, was it this man named jesus he must be a prophet and then uh he ended up basically saying that he, he must be must be the lord and he got down into the the end of john 9 here and when jesus heard what had happened this is verse 35 by the way when jesus heard what had happened he found the man and asked do you believe in the son of man some manuscripts say the Son of God. The man answered, Who is he, sir? I want to believe in him. You have seen him, Jesus said, and he is speaking to you. And the man said, Yes, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped Jesus. So we don't know if that happened here that Jesus said that. But we do know that that story is associated with the Pool of Siloam. It's a longer chapter. I'd encourage you to read John chapter 9 on your own. Something that stood out to me, though, from John chapter 7. In John chapter 7, uh, Jesus and the disciples head to Jerusalem for the Festival of Shelters. It's one of the Jewish festivals that is celebrated. And in John 7, 37, it says that Jesus stands up and shouts something at the climax of the festival. Okay? So here's what we know about the festival, according to some commentaries. They tell us that a part of the festival each day including the last day at the climax of the festival, a group of priests would make their way down from the temple. If you go in and take a peek at the pilgrim steps, those are the steps that they would take up to the temple. We'll see those here in a second. They would come down from the temple all the way here to the Pool of Siloam. They would draw water from the spring, which uh, Boaz told me most likely would have stretched even beyond that wall over there. It was a massive pool. They would draw water from the spring. They would head back up to the temple with shouts and chants of praise. And they would pour out the water as a part of their ceremony, doing this in connection to the words of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 12, verse 3, where Isaiah said, With joy you will drink deeply from the fountain of salvation. So during the festival of shelters, they would come down from the temple, they would gather water, they would chant and praise on their way up calling out this prophecy from Isaiah that you will drink deeply from the fountain of salvation, signifying the salvation of God, the living water that only he could provide. They've been doing this for, for years. And then there's a stir in the crowd. So imagine, maybe it happened right here, maybe it happened on the way up to the temple, but there's a stir in the crowd, and someone shouts during this this festival of praise headed up to the temple. Someone shouts in John 7, 37 and 38, it says, Jesus stood and shouted. Okay? It says this, Anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink, for the scriptures declare, rivers of living water will flow from his heart. Anyone who is thirsty can come to me? This is words of, words of blasphemy. And Jesus was, was claiming himself to be God. He was declaring himself as the fountain of salvation. The same fountain that they would have been reciting from on their way back up to the temple. The priest had just poured out the water as an appeal to God to provide water for their salvation. And Jesus tells the people, I am that water. That's directly tied to this location. If you keep reading, some heard Jesus say this and said, Surely this man is the Messiah, the prophet we've been expecting. Others were absolutely furious. Some wanted to arrest him and some wanted to stone him, but no one laid a hand on him. When the temple guards returned without having arrested Jesus, the priest asked, Why didn't you bring him in? To which they said, We've never heard anyone speak like this. 
temple guards who were sent to arrest Jesus for shouting, come to me if you're thirsty, and I'll give you living water. We've never heard anyone speak like this. So two different times, John 7 and John 9, tied to the pool of Siloam, Jesus makes the statement that I am the Messiah. I am the one you are looking for. Um, it's pretty profound when you think about where we are we are sitting here, and I would encourage you to go take a look. I'll let you know that, but go take a look up there to the right. You can see the, the pilgrim steps, and off they found some shops that would have been there for the pilgrims making their ascent up to the temple from here at the pool of Siloam. Boaz, I'll turn it back to you.